The Inn at Little Washington opened in a former garage in 1978 and over the years transformed into an international culinary shrine. And right now, its owner, renowned chef Patrick O'Connell, is going to transform a vegetarian recipe into yet another masterpiece. Patrick O'Connell here at the Inn at Little Washington. Have you have you met Dr. Vizier? This is Dr. Vizier. Such a pleasure to it's have you pleasure. back in Little Washington. Thank we you. understand you, you celebrated your first anniversary yes, here. Yes, we did. Yes, we did, and it was an incredible experience. Now he's a surgeon, uh -huh. so I'm not sure if it's going to be any kind of competition on the knife skills <laughs> here. Can, can you? Can I, you? I'm sure his knife skills are, are well above par. <laughs> You'll be keeping an eye on that. <laughs> yeah. what, are we, what are we making? Well, we're this going... This is a vegetarian dish, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We're going to show you how to make the humble beet into something very elegant and sophisticated and sort of party food, but wonderfully healthy. And this is on our menu called a beet carpaccio. We're going to roast the beets okay. in, in olive oil and balsamic vinegar with some herbs. So we just, uh, we're not particular about how we do this. We've just got some nice aromatic thyme and some rosemary, <clears throat> which could make anything mm, wow. uh, fragrant. Mm. And roasting is a very healthy way to cook. It certainly is, it certainly is. So we're just gonna coat these Is that something you recommend to people? Yeah, I mean, roasting <clears throat> as opposed to frying, or it's one of those ways to keep all the flavor in and also a very healthy way to uh, prepare food. And it's much simpler than boiling. <clears throat> so you, you covered it with? With a little Fish. olive oil and some balsamic vinegar to intensify those flavors. And <clears throat> I'm going to put a little pepper on them also. However, we are going to be taking the skins off of these. Well, you just steal a little garlic. have to have a little garlic and everything. Yeah, give it a little. Yeah. You're transforming. I'm, <laughs> I'm transforming. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Mark, if you'd like to put this in the oven, and we'll leave that in for over an hour. Oh, let me pull this open. Now, we are gonna make a simple little vinaigrette. In this case, we're gonna use orange juice. The beets respond wonderfully to the uh, acid in orange juice, and a little white wine vinegar, a little bit of walnut oil, and some olive oil. The walnut oil adds a sort of rich, kind of deep flavor. Some fresh tarragon. Uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful herb oh, to have good. around, yeah. And as the wonderful fragrance you need, some garlic, some shallot. You getting hungry yet? I am. Yes, I love garlic too. You so love I'm garlic too. Garlic in there. Well, and then we just give it a little whisk. What could be simpler? And this, of course, you can make in advance, but you don't need to. It took three minutes. Of course, if you have a few sous chefs to <laughs> lay out always. your tray, <laughs> to, it goes much faster. How long would it, uh, you can put it in the fridge and keep sure. it for days on it? Well, or? orange juice is a little bit volatile, so maybe overnight would be uh, mm -hmm. the maximum time you'd want to keep it. Uh, a little fresh pepper always. And then your beets come out of the oven, and you can tell that they're done by inserting a little paring knife in and being sure it doesn't give you any resistance that in the it, center. All the way into the middle? Yeah. yeah. That way you can be sure. Uh, that it's soft right. all the way through. Soft all the way through, but not mushy, Got of course. It. And then we use a disc cutter, which actually makes the process go rather quickly because we don't actually really have to peel the beet. We just drive that straight through, almost straight through, and we get a, a tube-shaped wow. beet so that when we slice it, it we're like gonna, cutting beef. It looks so much like beef, doesn't it? Yeah. And then we're gonna use the mandolin here, which everybody should have at home, a wonderful, simple little device uh, what, for perfect you? slicing. Now, you see, by putting the right amount of pressure and just guiding it down, you will get Evenly thin slices. Hopefully evenly thin slices. It takes two or three to, uh, and I could have done a little better job. Give it a shot. Okay. They're not going to be as nice as the ones he does, I'm let's sure. See, let's see how well, you know. 
How's that? that? looks Gorgeous. terrific. Look at these. Yeah. See, this is what you want. <clears throat> and of course, it's nice to, uh, to taste one. <laughs> and they are wonderful. You want to taste yes, one? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's unflavored, unseasoned. Oh, wow. Still good? Yes. It's very good. Still good. It's, it's Full of luscious flavor. And imagine that as beef. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. full of flavor. Medium rare. <laughs> so then the little magic trick so that you can do all this well in advance is that we lay it out, these beautiful petals, mm. on little parchment or deli wrap paper like this. And then we're just going to place that like that in the center about, say, 20 minutes before we're ready to serve wow. it. And <clears throat> it's beautiful. there, doesn't that look wow. like yeah. beef? And then you're going to uh, coat them with your vinaigrette. What a visual treat there, right there. It just grabs the yeah. eyes. So. This is a little zest of orange. We're going to garnish with that. And we also have some, when you have many different color beets, you can use those as a little garnish. So these are small baby beets in a sort of, uh, sort of yellow beets. And we'll just make a little garnish of those uh, on the side. So you have the beet two ways. <clears throat> What's the hardest part of getting your patients to eat healthy? Uh, I think it's the fact that when people think of healthy food, they think of food that doesn't taste good. Or boring food. Boring food. Boring exactly. food. Food should never be boring. So this is that simple little orange vinaigrette. And uh, now, if you want to add some nuts to the equation, you can. These are some sort of candied pecans that we're throwing around. And we use a lot of uh, chervil as a garnish. It's, what is that? It's the parsley family, mm. but it's much more delicate. and. Uh, more lacy and fern-like, and it's very fragile. That's the reason it's hard to find in supermarkets. It wilts very quickly. Patients come to you for what kind of surgery? Uh, I do a lot of uh, weight loss surgery. So you're perfect for yeah. a vegetarian. Because to have successful weight loss surgery, it's not just the surgery <laughs> itself. We're, we're all standing a little taller, <laughs> holding our guts in a little it's more. It's not just the surgery <laughs> itself, but the lifestyle modifications have to be there. And that means eating healthy, choosing the right types of foods. And most of my patients complain that Healthy food is difficult to make, and mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it doesn't taste good. And uh, for my patients, taste is king. When does the light go off over their heads? I mean, when you show them a dish like this, or when, I mean, <laughs> does the light some, sometimes go off over their it, heads? It does, it does. I mean, to get to weight loss surgery, uh, patients have to be very committed, and it's a long process. Uh, and it is finding these recipes or being in support groups where they share recipes and they find healthy food that's easy to make and taste good, and it makes that transition that much easier. Or they, could they all just come to the Inn of Little Washington? And they eat could. <laughs> and look at me. 35 years I've been eating here, five meals a day. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a clothespin? Oh, there we are. Well, it's the swimming Dalmatian spots. That's that helps. Say, that's that helps. <laughs> Cinching the apron. Absolutely. Okay. So now that uh, we have done it as you would want to do it if you were very concerned about your, your weight loss, we're going to show you the possibility of a, a few more garnishes. Mm. This is Greek yogurt that will add a nice pop of color and uh, will offer some lux luxury to the dish if we want to put that on top. And Greek yogurt can be low fat and very high in protein, so it's yes. actually very healthy. Yes. And then you just take a nice little bit of caviar and just mound that on top of your canal of Greek yogurt, and it almost looks like a restaurant dish. The beet you want carpaccio, a taste? yes. We must have a taste. Absolutely. Here. Okay. So, doctor. Dig in and get a little caviar and the yogurt and put them all together. That's a nice way to Kinda do it. Kind of like this? Uh, yes, but more caviar. Yeah. More. Do you wait, get nervous wait. when he's telling you how to eat this? Is it? Because <laughs> I, I, I actually I get wanna... a little. <laughs> I just want to do well, it right. You know what I mean? You'll see how, how good the caviar oh tastes oh, wow. with, and that, with the Greek yogurt <laughs> also. Right. And it's all. Mm -hmm. Wonderfully unfattening. <laughs> this is yeah, this is called tastes, French service. Here. Yeah, wow, you, <laughs> that's wonderful. That tastes nothing like mom's beets. Nothing like the beets I was forced to eat as a child. See, it's it's rather multidimensional. Wow. And uh, nothing at all unhealthy. You have transformed it, as you said. <laughs>